All right, guys, what's going on? And welcome back to the channel. This is a question I get a lot on my page. There is a lot of variety when it comes to choosing the right tools. So it is very true that some tools are easier or harder to use. I've used every Babeless Clipper from 2016 up until now to understand how each of them feel and also to help recommend people maybe the right shape or length of clipper that would help them best. When it comes to tool selection, obviously you guys know there is so many to choose from, so it's very difficult to kind of guess online and make a purchase, especially if it's expensive. So something that I always encourage people to do if you have any friends that have certain tools that you're curious about, it's gonna be in your best interest to actually put them in your hands and get a feel for them before you actually buy them. That way you know for sure if the weight is good enough for you or that the length and shape of the tool is comfortable in your hand. There's not ever a segment in school that actually explains the breakdown of tools. So that is something that I didn't learn until after I got out of school and got into a barbershop. I'm gonna talk about all the different body styles that we have at Babeless Pro, and I'm gonna rank them from what I think is really easy to use and adapt to your lifestyle and a tool that's harder to use based on certain specs. The first two, I would rate them the same as far as fading with them and how adaptable they are. It's going to be your low pro body or the lithium body. What I like about these is that they're short handle. They're not super long. It's comfortable, both in your hands. Both of them have an extended lever, which makes fading super easy because as you're fading hair, especially for those of you that are newer, you when you have a longer stretch, that gives you more space to blend. When you have a shorter amount to work with, that means you gotta get it right in those in-between, so something that is a little bit longer. A stretch lever like this, this gives you more float in between to allow you to get that blend out. I would say these two are gonna be my recommendation. Anytime people ask, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get into barbering and I want a tool that is uh, gonna help me with where I'm at, especially at a level one, if you're transitioning over from salon, this is the exact recommendation I've been giving to people, is get a lithium or get a low pro style body like this. This is gonna feel like more of your traditional clipper, so I think a lot of people like that feeling. And then this one, it's the lightest one that we have in the lineup and it's the most affordable one. And on top of that, it is literally one of my favorite tools today because I feel like you can fade with them super easy. Now, when it comes to different body styles, so you have a longer handle in comparison to something like this, as you can see here, if I line up the top of that, the black boost on this side is slightly a longer handle. So for some people that may make it difficult for them to use it because they feel that when they're using this tool, it's maybe like crossing their wrists at a weird angle that makes it really hard to hold depending on how you hold your tools. I haven't had any problems, but that's also muscle memory of being able to use it for a long time, so I've gotten used to it. If anyone's ever used any of the Boost Edition, it's powerful, it's quiet. This is an improvement from the original one that first came out, the Gold FX. I don't know if you guys know, but now there is a newer edition. This is the Gold FX FX1 edition. They shorten the handle just slightly and gave it a nice little bevel to make this a little bit shorter. If people do like this, but just want a shorter handle, uh, now you have that with these uh, new FX ones. Now we're on our fourth one. This is gonna be the hardest one of all. Some of you may know, some of you may not, but FX3. FX3 till this day, uh, you either hate it or you love it. We've even gifted this to different shows and people have gotten this for free. And I hear both uh, opinions where people either love it because it's very, very sharp, or they hate it because it's very hard to fade with. FX3 is a newer version of the X2, which I got when I first started with Babelist. That was back in 2016, I think I have one here. This is the old model, this is the X2. So you can see there's a couple differences in shape and just how it works. So when the FX3 came out, this was really easy to adapt for me. But with a longer stretch lever, that makes it easier to fade versus something that's super short, the FX3 has a short amount of space for you to fade with. So unless you are already maybe intermediate advanced, this is something that I think you could adapt to quickly. But for those of you that are still finding your way with fading and building the right muscle memories, this might be a little difficult to use. But if I have to say, I only know maybe one or two other people who like this tool on our team that use it just as much as I do, the more you get used to it, the better it's gonna get. Something that's also interesting about this tool is the serrated blades. It's a blade that's not as forgiving. It picks up hair really well, which makes this tool also great for any clipper over comb kind of work because of how sharp that blade is. Less forgiving, but if you have enough control and practice with this tool, 
you will actually love this. This blade is really great for going back in and cleaning up your work. Is it worth the chance? I would say yes, if you're like me and you're curious about how tools work um, and finding something that's good for different things. Like all of my tools, it's not like I use one set for the whole thing. The only time that's ever happened to me is when I first started cutting hair, I only used the kit that I had. So I only had one set. And of course, after an eight hour day, those blades would get super hot. And it wasn't until maybe like two years in that clipper completely burned out and stopped turning on. And I got really curious about, okay, these are all these different tools. Why are there different shapes? Why is there different blades? Why is there different stretches? And then I got a little bit obsessed and got into the technology of the tools, especially now working with Babelis. Um, I'm able to really explore all of the features and the different things about each of those tools. So is it worth it if you're like me and you love being able to sample different tools, learn about them? Um, this makes you honestly a better educator too, if that's something that you're looking to do. Knowing your tools is definitely going to be important. And then while we're on the subject of FX3, are they the same? For the most part, yes. You still have a full five hour runtime. The only difference is you get more of that matte black finish. These are actually discontinued. So if you do find these on sale somewhere, they're probably just getting rid of the back stock that they have. Um, but currently they only have the new FX3 three in black. You have your two speeds and that's another thing that the other tools don't have. Uh, everything else has either a 6300 RPM or a 6800 RPM. The FX3 has two speeds. So you have your 6000 and your 7000. 6000 is recommended to use when you're fading because as you're cutting through the hair, you don't want those blades to cut through the hair and make it super choppy. You want a slower controlled kind of cut. And then if I want to remove bulk or get rid of hair really quickly, I'm going to switch that up to 7000 make those blades run fast and then I'm able to cut through any kind of density. So hardest learning curve to learn with, but this tool is actually amazing. So when it comes to tools, we already talked about the different body styles. And when it comes to blades, all of them are interchangeable except the FX3. So you can actually pick a blade, pick your favorite blade. Maybe you're still learning, so you wanna try a different blade and you can put it on any clipper that you want. If you are starting out, let's just say you are one or two years in and you want something that's gonna ease you into feeling more comfortable when you're fading, I do suggest using a taper blade. So the taper blades have this more of a bevel finish. So think of it this way, when you're fading and you're creating that next guideline, you want something that's gonna round off and smooth off that section. You're not trying to cut off the ledge completely, you wanna round it off. So for the next area, as it's getting longer and you're creating that graduation, you want enough cushion to help you blend into the next guide zone. So taper blades, yes, this is good for beginners, but also let it be known that there are still advanced barbers who still prefer this blade. The next blade is gonna be in that middle tier. This is gonna be your fade blade. Similar to the taper blade, but instead of that bevel, you're gonna get a flat surface. So this is just going completely straight. Um, and what people like about this blade is that you have more control and precision. With the other blade, you have that bevel shape to kind of help and assist every time you do your C-scoops. But with a fade blade, it's gonna run completely flat to the head, giving you a lot more control when you're creating your shapes. Now there's no bevel on here, so this is all gonna depend on you using it to make sure that when you're cutting, you have enough C-scoop in your motion to create that soft edge for your next guide zone. Now, if you put those two together, you're gonna get my favorite blade. My favorite blade for at least the last two years. This is the wedge blade. I call this the best of both worlds. You have the flat surface here, which is the large surface, and right at the end, it bends and goes straight from there. What I love about this is that it's flat, like a fade blade, so it gives me a lot of control and precision to get to do what I wanna do. And then when I wanna detail, I'm pretty much just using this bend the tip of this blade and I'm able to go back in and refine all of my sections really nicely without having to use the rest of this. It's almost like a picker in a way where I'm only using just those edges and that's personal preference. And then also particularly, I do love the gold titanium. I love the way this crunches on the hair when I'm using it. Uh, for some of the barbers that are watching this that understand what I mean, it's more of a feeling than you can explain it. Solid blade for people that are feeling a lot more confident in their fading. This one is a great one to have on deck. Now with the newer blades, there's one more. This is gonna be your MIM blade. You're probably wondering what the hell does that mean? So if you look at the physical features of this, this is gonna resemble your fade blade. You have this completely flat surface. The only difference is you have this zigzag design here that is non-existent on our fade blade on this one. 
you just have a smooth surface here and here you have that zigzag. So MIM is gonna be your super precise metal. This is a uh, first ever in barbering to use this kind of metal for our blades. And this blade in particular is created with less friction as the cutting blades move across, which keeps the blades cooler, which is awesome. And think of the ridges as just like separating the hair as you go. When you're running this through somebody's hair, it's almost like it's organizing all the hairs to float through. Oil reservoirs on the inside um, that keep this blade lubricated. There's, uh, there's a pocket on the top and then there's a pocket on the bottom. So where the blade on the inside slides, it's gonna always stay lubricated in those oil reservoirs. Pretty cool. I love the blade and I love the lithium. So I decided to do one of my lithiums with that new blade on it. So other than that, I hope this video is helpful to you for anyone that is looking for recommendations. Um, all of the tool information, I'll put it down below on where you can find it, all the names um, and everything else. And then if you guys wanna check out my Amazon storefront, I will always leave that in the description below. It's all of my favorite cutting tools, styling tools, and all of my content creation tools. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.